Hey guys, welcome to the first video of my new series for USMLE Step 2 CK and Step 3. I'm going to start out by reminding you to please subscribe today and turn the notifications on. So the type of data that we gather for medical literature is almost always quantitative. There are two types of quantitative data, continuous data and discrete data. So I'm going to split up the five of the high yield statistical tests into whether continuous data is obtained for them or discrete data is obtained for them. Just to remind you, continuous data is that which is on a meaningful scale, can be negative, and is not restricted to integers. So examples are 8.8 .8 feet, 2.5 centimeters, 1 centimeter, negative 5 degrees Celsius. Continuous data can be considered synonymous with interval scale for the purpose of learning these statistical tests for the boards. And the three tests that we obtain continuous data for are one-way ANOVA, independent t-test, and paired t-test. All three tests have one interval variable, which is a dependent variable, and one nominal variable. Discrete data is non-negative integer only, and they are Discrete data is basically counts or frequency of occurrence. For the purpose of learning these tests, you can consider discrete data as being synonymous with the nominal scale. I will discuss the ordinal scale in a later video. The two tests for which we, we obtain discrete data for are chi-squared test and Fisher's exact test, and both these tests have only nominal variables. The scales that I mentioned in the previous slide are nominal and interval. Nominal is a scale that cannot be ordered or quantified. Interval is a scale that is used where every increment is meaningful. The continuous data tests, which are one-way ANOVA, paired t-test, and independent t-test, all assess whether or not there is a difference between the means of two, or more in the case of ANOVA, data sets. So the null hypothesis in the case of these tests is that the difference between the means of the data sets is zero. The alternative hypothesis is that the difference between the means is not zero. The applicability and appropriateness of each test does differ, which I'm about to explain. So the pair T test, so I'm going to start with this example of one group of leaves only in the entire test. So we have one group only in the entire pair T test. Data is gathered for each leaf in this group under sun exposure. So you have the sun here and you have our three leaves in the group, A, B, and C. Data is gathered for the length of the leaf. And so the table on the right of the right hand side of the slide has 3.54, 3.54, 3.59, 3.60. Those are all lengths of A. And similar tables can be gathered for leaves B and C for the length. So if you take the same set of leaves, or same, sorry, group of leaves, A, B, and C, and you transfer it to a shaded area, you obtain the similar tables for the lengths of each leaf after shade exposure. So here again is A, B, and C, and it's the group is exposed under shade, and lengths of the leaves after sun exposure are obtained. So you obtain similar data for each leaf. You therefore have two sets of data points for each leaf for the length. One set is for the sun exposure and the other is for the shade exposure. And recall that sun exposure is the nominal variable and the categories are exposure and non-exposure. The two sets are separated by time. You can obtain two means, so one is from each set of data. So for each leaf, you have two means because you have two sets of data. And the paired t-test for this reason is also called a linked test because the two sets of data and two means that you get are linked by coming from the same organism. The independent t-test. 
In the independent t-test, you have two groups exposed to two different categories of a nominal variable at the same time. So again, our nominal variable is sun exposure and the categories are exposure versus non-exposure. Constant sun ex constant exposure to the same nominal category for this test. So you're going to have one group under sun the entire time and the other group under shade the entire time. The interval data is obtained from each organism or object only once. So contrast that to the other test that I just discussed where each leaf is measured, can be measured multiple times and a data set can be obtained for that. In this case, we're only measuring each leaf once in a group. So here we have DENF exposed to the sun and GHNI exposed to shade. D is measured once, E is measured once, F is measured once, G is me measured once, H is measured once, I is measured once. And the means for each set of data can be obtained and you compare if there's a difference between the means you can reject or accept the appropriate hypothesis as I outlined in the first slide for these tests. ANOVA or analysis of variance. In this you can have three or possibly more groups of leaves and each group of leaves is for each nominal category. So we have different types of light exposure as our categories because our nominal variable is light exposure. So the categories are filtered natural light, lamp light, and solar light. Just like in independent t-test, each organism or object is measured only once. So we measure it getting our interval variable, which is also our dependent variable. You're going to calculate the means for each group, and you're going to compare the means of the groups with each other, and accept or reject the appropriate hypothesis, as I outlined in the first slide for the tests that use continuous data. Discrete data tests assess whether or not there is a relationship between two nominal variables by comparing expected proportions of frequencies to actual proportions of frequencies. And so the null hypothesis that you would craft would say there is no difference between expected and actual proportions and therefore no relationship exists between the two nominal variables. The alternative hypothesis would be a difference between expected and actual proportions exists and thus there is a relationship between the two nominal variables. The tests for which discrete data are obtained are chi-squared test and Fisher's exact test. So there are two nominal variables in these tests. And so for the purpose of explanation, my two nominal variables are going to be sun exposure and fungal disease growth. And fungal disease growth is a dependent variable. Basically, we're going to measure occurrences or counts of fungal disease growth versus non-growth in each exposure group of leaves. So we obtain a table like this. So we had 100 leaves in the sun exposed group and 100 leaves in the non-sun exposed or shade exposed group. In the sun exposed group, 70 developed fungal disease and 30 did not. In the non sun exposed group, 95 developed fungal disease and 5 did not. What do we do with this data? Well, we compare the proportions that develop fungal growth in each group to what was expected. Recognize that since we are dealing only with nominal variables, so in this case, the dependent variable is a nominal variable as well. Compare that to the first three tests where the dependent variable was an interval variable. So Fisher's exact test is pretty much like chi-squared test, except for it's used on low power studies where the number of leaves per exposure group is less, so like about five to 10. So say for example, in the sun exposed group, 
we had five to 10 leaves. And in the shade or non-exposed group, we had five to 10 leaves. We would then use the Fisher's exact test as opposed to the chi-square test. Thanks for watching my video. More videos in this series coming soon. If you haven't already subscribed, please do.